Hi, this is Mr. Reese, and this video is going to focus on the area of circles. Before we get started on what the area formula is and how we would use it, let's first start off with one very, com very important component about the area formula, and that is pi. Pi, which is a Greek letter, is written like this, and its value is approximately 3.14 or 22 over 7, depending on whether you want to use decimal or fraction. The actual value is an irrational value in that it keeps going on continuously and without any end. So what happens is, is that since it is continuous and without any discernible pattern, we don't have an exact value that we can refer to. So what we use are approximations. Therefore, when you determine the area of a circle, you're going to have to deal with whether or not you want an exact answer or whether you want an approximation. The formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. Pi being one of these two approximations and then r being the radius of the circle. Now, what will happen is, is that if you're asked for an exact value, what you will do is you will leave your answer with pi in it. On the other hand, if you want an approximation, you'll substitute one of these two values. For this video, we're going to be using 3.14. So how about we do an example. Let's determine the area of this particular circle here. And let's do both ways. Let's do in terms of pi, which means we want an exact answer. And let's round off to the nearest hundredth. These are the steps that we're going to use to help figure out these problems. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to write out the formula. Now let's go ahead and substitute our given value here. We are given the radius of the circle, 6. So 6 is going to go right here for r. All you got to do here is square the 6 and you get 36. And that's it for part A. We've written the answer in terms of pi, meaning that there's a pi in the answer. And this is an exact answer, so we're going to leave it as this. Now, if you want to round off the nearest hundredth, that's when you substitute 3.14 in for pi. As soon as you do that, this is no longer exactly equal, so this is now counting as an approximation. Just go ahead and do your multiplication here, and that's all there is to it. One last note about the units. You'll note that we were given as 6 inches. So remember that area is a measure of how many square units there are inside. And since the units are inches, these are square inches. So there we are. All right, how about we try another? Let's determine the area. Well, let's say we have the area. Let's determine the diameter. As stated before, we're going to start off with our formula first, then plug in our given value. In this case, the area is given, therefore that's going to go right here. Okay, let's finish this off here and solve for r. We're going to divide out the pi now, and what that does is that allows us to reduce out here on the, le on the right hand side and on the left hand side. And then to finish off, we're going to square root. Now in algebra, typically when you square root both sides of an equation, you would write your answer as plus or minus. But since we're talking about physical distance here, what the actual length is, we're not going to have a negative distance. So we just simply take the principal square root, which basically means leave it positive. So the square root of 100 is 10. 10 is your answer. Except we're not quite finished. Remember, we were asked to determine the diameter. Well, the diameter is in 10. That's the radius. Recall that the uh, radius is always half the length of the diameter. So if you want to determine the diameter, all you got to do is take 10 here and double it. So in reality, the answer is 20. And now we are finished. OK, how about we now try another? Let's determine the area of this blue region, and we're going to round our answer to the nearest hundredth. This right here is telling you immediately that you're going to be plugging in 3.14 in for pi. You will note that these four blue regions here are created essentially by a square and by a circle that's been removed from it. So that's going to be our strategy here. That's the square. And then what we're going to do is we're going to determine the area of the square, then subtract the area of the circle. For the circle, hopefully you recognize that since this entire length is 6, 
so also is this entire length, 6, which means that the radius is just 3. So when we write our formulas, we have that of a square, and some people don't use the ordinary parallelogram formula for this. They will uh, use uh, s times s for side squared. And that's the circle. So what we're going to do here is we're going to determine the area of one and minus the other. The square has a base of six, as does the height. So we're going to go six times six. And then for the circle, it's, uh, it's going to be three point one four times three squared. Remember that we're rounding the nearest hundredths, therefore in for pi we're going to write in three point one four, in for r is just three, so there that is. The rest is from the magic of your calculator, and this will solve out the rest of the problem. This part gives you thirty six. For this part here you'll want to do the parenthesis the uh, exponents first, so three squared is nine. So 3.14 times 9 gives you 28.26. Just go ahead and do your subtraction, and that will finish off the problem. Okay, let's do another. This time we're given the circumference instead of a radius or a diameter. Determine its area in terms of pi. Well, since all we're given is the circumference, let's start off with its formula first. There are two ways of writing the formula for the circumference. We're using the one involving the radius. And the reason why is because in order to determine the area, you need the radius. Now let's go ahead and plug in our given value here, that being 16 pi for the circumference. That'll go right here. Now what we want to do is we want to solve for r. So we'll do that by dividing out whatever's next to r here, which is in this case the 2 and the pi. This allows us to reduce out our pi's and the 2's on the right hand side. On the left hand side the pi's reduce out and that just leaves you with 16 divided by 2. So now we have the radius. And now that we have the radius we can continue on to determine the area. We now can go with our area formula. And since we know the radius is 8, we can plug that in over here for r. Eight squared is sixty-four. And just like that, we're done. I want to recap the steps that we used to solve this problem. It was basically the same three steps each time. That was step one. That was step two, plug in the values. And that was step three, solve. Then over here we did the same thing. That was step one. That was step two. And that was step three. So it's the same thing over and over again. Begin with the formula first. Just make sure it's the appropriate one. Plug in the values that you are given ahead of time or have determined. And then whatever variable that is left you would solve for. Okay, let's do one last example here. Let's determine the area of this figure, and we'll round to the nearest hundredth, meaning that we're going to be replacing pi with 3.14. First of all, you should recognize that this is actually a Frankenstein of two different figures. You have the rectangle in the middle, and we have this half circle on the left, and a half circle on the right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to determine simply the area of this rectangle and then the area of this circle and then add them together. So let's first write the area for this rectangle first and then the area for this circle second. Focusing on the circle first, the radius is pretty easy. It's four units. As for the rectangle, we know the base is 20 but what about the height? Well, recall that for the circle, the radius is four, meaning that it's four units going this way and four units going this way as well for a total of eight. So how does that relate to the rectangle? Well, the original figure looked like this. 
And since it's four units this way and four units this way, in other words, the diameter being eight, that also happens to be the height for the rectangle. Therefore, we can go ahead and put base times height being 20 times eight. And now we're ready to solve. Adding these two values together, let's first multiply here to get 160. If you multiply these, keep in mind we would square the four first before multiplying the 3.14. And this would give us 50.24. Adding those two totals together, we get 210.24. Recall that this is an approximation, which is why we're using this symbol here to denote the area.